This is KGW News at 11. We begin tonight with breaking news out of rural Washington County. Deputies believe they have found the remains of a 20 year old woman who went missing six months ago near North Plains. Allison Watterson hasn't been seen since December 22nd of last year. Her disappearance sparked a large search that went on for weeks. Deputies say a property owner found human remains this afternoon on Northwest Corey Road in rural Washington County. This is near where she was last seen in December. Detectives are still on scene investigating. They say based on the location and evidence they found, they believe the remains belong to Watterson. We asked if they have any reason to suspect foul play, but they say they are still investigating. Detectives that spoke with the family uh, did say that they uh, are relieved to have some, some answers. Obviously not the outcome that any of us wanted. Uh, and they're grateful for the public's assistance. I know the, the community has been really supportive their last six months and they're, they're grateful for that. Watterson was last seen with her boyfriend, Benjamin Garland, north of North Plains. Her family says they thought they were hiking. As deputies began searching the area, they learned a truck was stolen and arrested Garland on charges unrelated to her disappearance. He pleaded guilty to those charges and was sentenced to three years in prison back in April. Again, deputies are not saying if they believe foul play was involved in this case, but we'll keep you updated. Protests over racism and police brutality continue tonight at the Justice Center. For now, the fourth straight weekend. Earlier today, people continued to celebrate Juneteenth in Portland with a block party. Live music, speeches, all streamed online as well. Christel Kumwe has a look at how the holiday was different this year. Nonprofit Juneteenth Oregon took its 155th annual celebration online this year. Heart of a warrior, the blood of my dad. With the help of PDX Jazz, Saturday's virtual event included live performances and speeches with a special appearance by City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty. What a wonderful, wonderful day. Hardesty says she's committed to making sure this day forward, the city of Portland values black lives. It says it's an equal city. It says we are a sanctuary city and we welcome everyone. Well, we are starting down the path today to ensure that the city of Portland will be a city that is welcoming and equal for everyone. The commissioner also thanked the thousands of people who've been out on the street to make their voices heard. Typically, demonstrators have marched from Revolution Hall to various parks around Portland, but on Saturday, a large crowd gathered for what they called a block party near the Hawthorne Bridge. We are a celebration of black, indigenous, people of color. We are protesting. We are we are representing, we are speaking out, Black Lives Matter. We are during Pride Month and graduation time. The block party featured music, food, and speeches for those who gathered. There are children, there are seniors, everybody's here. I've seen people openly weeping. And, you know, we can't hug each other. We have to try to do our best to stay apart, but people are just feeling the moment. It's beautiful. The celebration of Juneteenth, Oregon, dates back to 1945, when the late and beloved community leader, Clara Peoples, brought the tradition from Oklahoma to her co-workers in Portland, Oregon. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. Thank you, Christelle. Well, in Eugene, a Black Lives Matter mural was vandalized last night, not even a day after it was first painted. And as you can see, a car left skid marks over the lettering on the street. The street art was approved by the city and the artist had a permit to paint it. They returned to repaint the mural this afternoon using hand prints to cover the skid marks. Turning a negative into a positive is what people of color have had to do for years. We've had to turn every disadvantage into an advantage. So this just amplified that. It reminded me that it's as prevalent as it was yesterday as it is today. Police say they found the driver that damaged the mural and they're investigating what happened. Now to the latest on the pandemic. Here's a look at the latest COVID-19 cases across the state. Oregon reported 178 new cases today and one new death. It's the 10th day in a row that we've seen more than 100 new cases. The Oregon Health Authority says it's seeing a big increase in positive cases as it continues to increase testing. Health officials say that's expected with all counties now reopening. And that finally includes Multnomah County, which officially entered phase one just yesterday. Places like OMSI are now slowly opening their doors with some new safety measures. 
Well, we're just over the moon to welcome visitors back to the museum. And OMSI was the perfect place to get out of the house and even avoid the rain. Saturday marked their reopening after being shut down because of coronavirus restrictions. Visitors returning can expect to see a few changes. The biggest thing, and you can see that I have my face cover on right now, is that we are requiring guests 12 and over to wear a face cover to the museum. In addition, they have limited entrance capacity and some exhibits will remain closed. But that didn't stop people like Sarah Lopez and her family from selling out the early slots to Body World. I've been waiting months for this exhibit to open up again, and I was so bummed when I didn't get to make it the first time around a couple months ago. She wasted no time in getting her tickets this time around. And when I got the email yesterday, they were open again. I, within five minutes, I had tickets. Lopez appreciates the new safety measures and says they didn't distract her or her family from enjoying the outing. I think it's the least we can do, honestly. I think if you can wear a mask for an hour if you're out and you can protect everyone around you, I don't see any issue with it. We've had a lot of changes in all of our lives over the last couple months and certainly Getting kids and families and adults and everybody out of the house is top of of folks' minds. And and we're just trying our best to make sure it's safe for everybody that comes through our doors. Portland's Saturday market vendors welcomed back shoppers today with a lot of changes to protect our community's health. They've reduced the number of booths, are requiring staff and vendors to wear face coverings, enforcing social distancing, and making hand sanitizer readily available at every entrance and booth. The market is opening back up on Saturdays only, at least for now, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Our world is obviously going through a lot of changes right now, and that can be a lot for kids and teens to deal with. So the Portland Art Museum wants them to express what they're feeling right now through art. Photojournalist Richard Gordon has a look at the Journal On program launching today. My name is Hannah Layson, and I'm the head of youth and educator programs at the Portland Art Museum. We are going through an extraordinary time. We are all experiencing a global pandemic, an economic recession, a powerful social justice movement. Kids who are out there watching this, what is it like to be you right now? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What are you experiencing every day? We want to hear from you. We would love to include your voice in this project that hundreds, maybe thousands of people will participate in. This project comes out of a partnership between three organizations, Create More Fear Less, the Visual and Performing Arts Department at Portland Public Schools, and the Portland Art Museum. We're partnering with artists from throughout the region to create short videos each week to help inspire you. My prompt today that I'm working with is, what will you remember most about this time? To participate, you just check the prompts that we'll share weekly on the website, journalon.org, and you create something, anything, uh, and we want to encourage people in all different arts disciplines. It just needs to be captured in a still image that then you upload onto our online gallery. We wanted to create a forum for young people to encourage them to create art as a way of, of you know, processing what they're going through. Something else that makes this different from other social media contexts is that people will not be able to directly comment on other people's work. Um, but we know that things are going to be really different for a long time. Um, so we feel it's really important to create something that can adapt to people's interests and people's needs. Whatever is on your mind right now is what we want to hear about and, and see about. Oh, so important for those kids to get that expression out, and art is just such a great outlet. Thanks to Richard Gordon for that story. Well, still ahead, we'll take you to Tulsa, where President Trump held his first campaign rally since the COVID-19 pandemic started. We've got a look at what happened inside and outside coming up. And our first day of summer didn't feel very summer-like. We picked up a third of an inch of rain at PDX. Temperatures struggle to get to 70, but improving weather awaits tomorrow. Your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes.